which store should you upgrade first and who's absolutely not worth it and why you should focus on focus since it's super strong and can be used by strength decks in builds alike first let's talk stores and the one you should upgrade in the very beginning is Fillmore, and that has the simple reason that he does sell you copper pickaxe and copper shovel but as soon as you upgrade him in one single time and that is only for copper ore and the normal wood you find in the beginning you already get an iron pickaxe and a shovel but if you upgrade him one more time you can not only buy iron ingots and at that i can buy 13 iron ingots straight away the next upgrade gives you a silver pickaxe making gathering resource even faster and a silver shovel plus you can buy silver ingots and here it would be another oh, he's actually selling 19 and keep in mind that upgrading your weapons needs silver ingots. And if I wanted to upgrade my chest piece, tier three chest piece, that's goddamn 10 silver ingots. You'll need a lot. But he's not the only one that has amazing stuff. Next up would be Whittaker. Whittaker is this guy, and I don't think I would have ever interacted with him. But he does actually sell you chests. Yep. Tier one would be a consumable cupboard and a small chest. But if you upgrade him one time, you already get a medium chest that can store up to 20 items and a medium cupboard for up to 20 consumables. Consumables would be food at that. These chests you can put into your own house. And I bought the cheapest one that is situated here on the right side. It cost me 20 silver. 20 silver sounds like a lot, but right now I'm running around with 56 and I wasted quite a lot. And in this house, you can put down everything you'd like. So we got 120 chests here full of my vials. Then we have another 20 chest here that is completely empty right now. And I could store some weapons with runes. I mean, this one has fire swipe. This one has fire swipe. And fire swipe is pretty damn good. We'll get to that in the focus section. And yes, your own crafting tools like a furnace, anvil can all be put down here as well. These you can all buy at Master Danis, who does your upgrades to have everything kind of gathered in one single location. Now, who's the most important after upgrading the smith and the wood guy? And there's two choices. Either we're going for the alchemy stand or you're going to get Gordon's Pantry to tier two. Tier three is not needed yet. Tier two should be more than enough. The alchemist has a simple reason to be upgraded because he sells you potion recipes, but he does sell you the potions too. And I have been going through a lot of vials of focus at this point because I can one hit everything in the crucible and even absolutely demolish bosses and with the vials of focus i make sure that i'll never get into an annoying situation where i'm lacking and they only do cost 21 copper here and the supply is seemingly endless now before we go to gordon and i'll show you the upgrade greenwich is quite useless to upgrade he does tell you more resources craft leather to upgrade some things but realistically, the important thing he already sells is clay. I currently bought all clay that you'll need for upgrading, and he restocks that in a while. But he sells this on level one already. The level two truly didn't give me anything that would make me feel good, and it was wasted money. The same goes for the second level of Eleanor. Yes, she does tell you further runes, like the heat enchantment, cold enchantment, electric enchantment, and I think the plague enchantment. Yes. These are you're getting. And there is a Curse, Crone, Spark, and Thunderstrike wand. But her actual skills don't increase. Her enchanting doesn't get better. Her infusing or her runing. Nothing of these improve in any way. Whereas if we upgrade Gordon, he does get his own restaurant. And not only the own restaurant, the food he sells is quite incredible. Yes, it is expensive. But instantly restore 80 health, which is great. And increases health by 30 for 600 seconds. That's fantastic for any boss fight. Further recipes are being sold too, so you can make yourself all the food he's actually selling. And if you now would upgrade him to tier three, there's even more valuable food, and especially these long lasting buff foods for boss fights. Now you could think about upgrading Caroline, but the only thing that does is provide you with a bed you can sleep in to regenerate your HP. That seems useful in the beginning, but as soon as you get a single item with health regeneration on, you are always topped up and you'll never have to waste some food to actually top yourself up. Now let's talk why focus is so amazing because every character is essentially a mage. Since with focus, you can use your weapon arts, your runes. Right now I have something called lightning assault, which is a dash forward that essentially one hits everything. 
even big opponents. Oh, I do have a Claymore, which has the ability Eruption. And now you would think, yeah, this is probably going to scale with Intelligence because it's kind of like a fire spell. Well, that's not true. This is a weapon that scales with Strength. And this is a weapon that scales with strength. And the rune itself seems to scale with that as well, because I am factually continuously dealing high amounts of damage. And since it's a two-handed weapon, I can put all other two-handed weapon arts on it. The fire swipe that this sword has, yes, that can go on my axe too if I wish to. The flame sweep, possible. The hellfire is only for staffs, if I'm not mistaken. And the fire slam we get by the pound of cadavers, yep. That one is going to work on mine as well. Generally speaking, you can take any tier three weapon you like, like this one-handed straight sword, and then equip it exactly with the runes that you feel good. Keep in mind, you can't over engrave runes. So mine already has lightning assault and one empty. That means I can add one empty to it. If I then want to remove it, it will break the weapon. So I got to choose wisely what I would like to have. Just to give you a little demonstration, and this is where my focus vials come in. This area can be annoying, but I'll go in, Lightning Assault, Oof, down. <laughs> and the best part is the damage I just dealt there actually gave me some focus back. Lightning Assault. And he's dead. Plus my focus is almost completely up again. And this is a, this is a rinse and repeat. This continues. Oh, he, he pushed me over. Annoying. Lightning Assault. <laughs> so this is how we can essentially make our way now through the game right <laughs> by completely obliterating everything and yes this does work against bosses as well and now i'm gonna hit one and my focus is already vastly filled up not oh, actually enough for another lightning assault because i put some points in focus and that actually hires your focus points i'm currently at 326. sounds like i'm playing a mage but focus is not mana even though you might think it's mana. Focus is just ability juice. And important things to look for is gain focus on damage dealt, because whenever I deal damage, I get more focus. And on top of health regeneration, there is focus regeneration. These are percentual. So the more focus I have, the more regeneration I do, the more health I have, the more regeneration I do. And that's why I have my focus increased by 21%. And my focus gain is as well increased by 25%, which gives me another 29% focus gain and 100 focus on the ring. And that together creates this moment where a single normal hit of my weapon against this opponent is almost like that was three hits and I am, I am focused up. We're, we're almost at 326 straight away. And the best part about focus attacks is they don't need stamina. So I could blast myself out of stamina. One, two, three. And then I can still do my focus attack. So no matter what you do, so no, no matter what situation you bring yourself, you could just easily create an opening, put yourself in a direction, roll as much as you want, to then be able to focus obliterate your opponent. Now, the biggest problem is you can't actually test every single ability. I mean, right now, these swords here that have blister, they would need me to have 26 intelligence to test. That's not completely true. What I do is I have a testing sword. This is my standard two-handed Claymore, and you can actually buy them at Fillmore. So he does sell you a testing Claymore, and he sells you a testing blood-rusted sword. This is essentially what you need in the basic. And then what you do is you can go to Illyranor, runes, take the blister sword that I have here, get fire swipe off it that destroys the weapon. And then I can take the claymore that I have and I can, for example, put the fire swipe on to now see, is the fire swipe worth it? Is it something I would like to have? Equip fire swipe, drink a tiny vial that you can buy. And now I can give it a try on B. Eruption seemed a bit cooler. Right? If I do this against a boss, it should probably be more amazing. This is how I try out everything. And that's where you actually don't straight up sell your collected weapons. You might de-rune them. <laughs> Keep in mind, one-handed arts can't go on two-handed weapons. Two-handed arts can't go on one-handed weapons. And it does actually say in your rune inventory. Slot this rune into a staff to gain fireball. Slot this rune into a two-handed weapon. One-handed, one-handed. Cold enchantment on any weapon. 
and then two-handed weapons fire swipe again ladies and gentlemen is this helpful did this improve your gameplay do you want to see this in action during the crucible almost beating the boss enjoy the day two 100 exploration or learn how to parry 100 of the time enjoy thank you for watching